So if you want to start playing the guitar, obviously the first thing you've got to do is get a guitar. And I had set it on very early in my mind that I wanted an acoustic guitar, not an electric guitar. I've played a couple of electrics before, but I've never owned one, so I'm not really going to talk about them. But when I, at the beginning I was trying to uh, work out which one I should buy, I really knew nothing. Uh, so these are just a few of the things that I've picked up. I'm going to have a look at three different guitars. Now this is a, um, a nylon string guitar, uh, often called a classical guitar, and uh, these will be, if you're not sure whether you want to sort of long-term invest in an instrument, these will be the cheapest kind of guitars that are out there, I'll explain why later. Now, uh, what you'll get from a uh, uh, nylon string guitar is, as the name suggests, um, strings that are made out of nylon, so if you have a look um, at a nylon string guitar, these top three strings, one, two, three, they call the top even though physically on, they're on the bottom because their um their tones the pitch is higher as opposed to these these strings up up here um these are the bass strings so they're lower they're deeper so that's why um, these are called the top strings here anyway um they're made out of nylon so if you're um uh, a beginner guitar um a guitarist rather uh, you're probably not a guitar if you're watching this uh, you'll probably find a nylon string guitar the easiest to start on because nylon as opposed to steel which I'll show you in a second is much easier to hold down for your fingers um, at the beginning um, everyone's fingers uh, the, your fingertips on your non-writing hand um, so the left hand is the one which holds down the strings over here um, everyone's fingers start out really soft Right? But after a while, holding down these strings, you can see that these top ones are, are nylon, and these ones uh, over here are nylon, but they're coated in, um, they're, they've had uh, metal wrapped around them. Um, after you hold these down for a while, your fingers will start to get calloused and hard because they've been holding down things so long. It's kind of the same reason why the skin on the bottom of your feet is calloused, because you're, you're always using them to walk on things, right? Anyway, uh, you'll find this really easy to um, play, or comparatively easy to play. And the kind of sound that you get is a quite uh, soft, sort of gentle sound. So it sounds like this, right? Um, so that's kind of a nice sound to start off with. The, what I've found over the years is that if you're playing an island string guitar and you're playing with rhythm, because the... Um, the notes are quite gentle and soft together. They tend to blend together and they have a less distinct sound, like each individual note. So for instance, if I play a rhythm here like this. Um, it's kind of harder to make out all of the individual strings within that sound. They all kind of blur together. So um, that's one thing that I've noticed after a while playing a nylon string guitar and comparing that to a steel string, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, now, what else do you want to know about it? Uh, what you'll find about an island string guitar is it's also quite light and it's easy to transport so you could easily hold it with one hand and feel quite comfortable with it. But um, that's often where people begin, a nylon string guitar. I think mainly because they're cheap. Okay, now, uh, let's have a look at a different guitar. <clears throat> this guitar is um, made by a, um, a brand of manufacturer called uh, Samic. That's what the S is for. It's part of the Greg Bennett design series. Anyway, um, this is the guitar that I first bought when I, I started playing, and uh, it's a steel string guitar, uh, also sometimes called a folk guitar. Um, and what you'll notice immediately uh, is, well, these strings, if you can look at them closely, are made out of steel. So when you hold them down, it, it presses against your fingers a lot more. So when you're starting out and your fingers haven't grown that much strength, if you've been playing a nylon string for a while and then you move over to a, um, to a steel string, what you often find is you don't have the strength to hold down the strings hard enough and you'll get that buzz which everyone hates. So for instance, if you play like this, can you hear, if I don't hold the strings down hard enough, um, you either don't get the sound of the notes like that, or when you hold them down, See, yeah, yeah. I, I've developed a fair bit of hand strings, so, so it's, it's hard to actually hold them down, not properly. But anyway, um, you'll hear that buzzing sound like this. Uh, can I do it? I'm holding it down too hard. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, um, you need more strength to play a steel string guitar. And in fact, um, if you play long enough, if you have the determination, you can actually make your fingers bleed because the strings will cut through your fingers, particularly based on, you know, if you've got some really, really heavy strings, um, you can get different kinds of um, weighted strings based on how loud you want to play, what kind of st style and that kind of thing. Now, another thing you'll notice between the steel string and the nylon string 
if I put them next to each other, is that um the uh, the neck that's the um, that's the part here which has the um, the strings on it. The neck of the nylon string is actually a fair bit wider than the neck of the steel string. I don't really know why that is, um, but that makes the um, the nylon string actually if it helps to have bigger fingers when you're holding it. Whereas the steel string, all the strings are quite close together. Now that's got its own challenges. When the strings are closer together, it's easy for um, one finger to get in the way of another string and accidentally hold it down. Uh, but that's just a minor thing to note. Now, like I said before, the nylon string, um, you get quite a soft sound. When you compare it to a steel string, most of the sounds are, are quite hard and sharp in comparison. So you get these kinds of uh, sounds. So I'll play the same sort of... So each of the notes rings out a lot more distinctly, which you pick up a lot, uh, a lot clearer if you're playing um, rhythm. So if you're playing rhythm like this. So you might find it easier to pick out all of the, um, the notes uh, after a bit of experience uh, that are played on a steel string a little more easily than on a, um, on a nylon string. Now, a couple other things to note about this guitar in particular. Um, if you look up here, um, as you go towards the, um, the sound hole, <clears throat> you've got what's called a cutaway. Now, what's that about? Um, I used to think it's just to make guitars look fancy. Um, the main, main reason why there's a cutaway is because um, depending on what kinds of music you play, if you play a lot of uh, lead guitar, which is, you know, um, uh, things like this, uh, when you've got when you've got melodies in between lines. So if you're if you've got notes rather than whole chords, so So if you're playing that kind of thing, um, often the notes that are played for those are much higher than if you're playing just a rhythm guitar. So if you want to reach higher notes, you can see that with the nylon string, there's a whole bunch of frets that you literally can't reach. Um, up past here, this is that's fret 12. Um, you're gonna find it. You're gonna find it. Anyone would find it difficult to reach any of these frets up here, which kind of makes you wonder. Why, why do they even put the frets there? But that's, uh, I don't know really why. Um, I guess it's a traditional number of frets and they reach all the way up to the sound hole. Um, so this guitar doesn't have a cutaway, so it's really kind of impractical to reach up to here. So that's why um, some guitars will cut away like that. <clears throat> uh, and that'll allow a guitarist, if you want to play those really high notes like up here, um, there's fret 12 there. And so I can go all the way up to 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I can reach 20. I don't know why you'd want to play for 20, but anyway, you can. Um, so that's what the cutaway is about. Uh, a couple of things else about this guitar you might notice is that um, this guitar is quite a lot thinner. Um, if you have a look, um, you know, what's the, the distance that the um, guitar is extending out of your body. Um, so what that'll produce is a bit less sound. The, the bigger the volume of the guitar, the more, uh, like as in the bigger the physical volume, like in cubic centimeters, um, the more sound it will produce. Uh, now the reason why this particular guitar can get away with being a bit thinner, which for some people makes it a bit more comfortable to play, is that this is what's called a semi-acoustic. So uh, even though it is an acoustic guitar, and I'm not plugged in at the moment, and I can make sound, um, you also have what's called a pickup. Now, uh, you can tell a guitar which has a pickup because on the top of the guitar there will be all of this like fancy electronic stuff and I'll, I'll have a look at that another time probably. Um, but what that means is for this guitar, um, you've got uh, underneath underneath the bridge, um, you've got some, um, some sensors which pick up the vibrations of the strings and then they can output that to a speaker or an amplifier, right? So you can see right down the bottom here, uh, there's a whole... Uh, and for different guitars, it's at different places. Um, this is where you put in a lead or a cable, which would plug into a speaker. And um, you can play this out, and um, it's, it's super loud. So that's why this guitar can get away with being a bit thinner and getting less volume out, because um, often people will play it uh, you know, plugged in. So it, the actual sound that the guitar produces is not that important. So like I said, this is the guitar that I started off playing. Uh, a nice sort of beginner's guitar. It, it sort of, what did it cost? Uh, $500. Uh, one last thing which is handy and unusual, quite rare, I've hardly ever seen another guitar like this, but um, you remember I pointed out all this fancy electronic stuff before, uh, one of the cool things that's included in it is a tuner, so the tuner is built into the guitar, but we'll talk about tuners another time, that's a big topic. Okay, so the third and last guitar that I'm going to show you this morning... is this one here, okay. 
now this is a um, this is a Maton guitar. So uh, again, you can see the um, the brand tends to be up here if you're looking for who makes a guitar. Or also inside the sound hole, you can sometimes see there's some writing and labeling and all that kind of thing. So how is this guitar different to um, the guitar that I just showed you? Well, similarity, sorry, first, it's still another steel string guitar, okay? So the basic sound is still the same. Um, differences are, number one, you'll, the most immediate notice, things that people notice is that there's no cutaway, okay? And the reason for that is that um, usually we're playing rhythm guitar at ICF anyway, so um, we don't need to tend to use these strings, and I'm sorry, these frets, I mean. And when you have a cutaway, because just like making the guitar thinner, you're losing internal volume for the guitar. Um, guitars with cutaways are just that little bit softer um, than guitars without them. Um, they also tend to be more expensive because it's, it's difficult to actually um, uh, put that uh, shape into the body of the guitar. So this one doesn't have a cutaway. You also notice that it's, um, it is actually thicker. So this is a full thickness guitar, but that's not because it's only an acoustic guitar. Just like the previous one, the Samic, um, this also has um, a slot where you can plug in uh, a cable, which will go to a speaker or an amplifier, okay? Other things, uh, this is made out of different materials. So the kind of wood, um, you'll often see subtle differences in the appearance and also the sound of a guitar. Now, you'll probably get e better at picking up the differences between guitars as you get more experience, but I'll just play this for you and you can hear the difference for yourself if it comes through the mic anyway. So, uh, what did I play before? I think I played this. Play a bit of rhythm for you. Let's see, I'll play it in, let's play it in C, shall we? So, minor differences, okay? So, one other thing that you want to have a look at, um, which was on the previous guitar, um, and this guitar, but not on the nylon string, this is what's called a pick guard. So, um, as the name suggests, it's um, to protect your pick, or your plectrum from damaging the, the nice fancy wood on your guitar. So as you can see when I play, like so. Um, I, I, you're not really meant to, but just naturally, the, the motion of your hand will take the pick and it will actually strike against your, the body of your guitar. As it goes through those final strings, it, it, it makes an impact there. So that's just meant to protect the wood. Um, and some some of the pick guards are really fancy. That's just a, an M logo. Anyway. So there you go. That's um, three different kinds of acoustic guitar. And um, oh, by the way, this one, this one costs about, uh, let's see, uh, $1,400, okay, so a bit, a bit of a difference in price. Again, that's mostly for um, the, the difference in quality in the sound and also, also some of the things like the electronics that are in it. But again, that's a topic for another day. I hope that helps you to distinguish between some of the different kinds of acoustic guitar out there. Uh, a lot of things come down to um, just personal preference and taste. Uh, things that I was looking for in my first guitar, for instance, are things like, say, um, if you have a look, it's really hard to see, even from um, far, far away, let alone from um, your distance. Um, but the distance from the, the strings down to the fretboard, um, that's often called the action of the guitar. Now, the higher the action is, or the, the bigger the action is, the more volume you can get out of a guitar. But it also, because you have to hold those strings down, um, it also makes the guitar much harder to play, because you have to hold down harder. So one of the things that I was looking for uh, in, my, in my early guitar was um, a low action, an easy action, if you like, that made the strings very easy to, to hold down. Because, you know, it's no use getting a really good sounding guitar if uh, it's so hard to play that you end up never playing it and then you don't learn it and it's, that's a bit silly. Um, so if you, if you want to go buy a guitar, uh, don't just look up reviews. <laughs> Um, and, and look at you know the online catalog and that kind of thing. You, there's really no substitute for walking into a shop, uh, picking up a guitar. If you ask the attendants, um, they should be fine with you doing that. Um, and just give it a play. See how it feels, see how it sounds, um, and see what kinds of guitar you like.